So, interesting news here. We have Mr. One Jeff Staple decided to sit down um, uh, for a talk, you know, no pun intended, <laughs> okay, with a guy called Ben Kicks on a for a show called Sneaker Talks. I guess Ben Kicks is a very popular sneaker collector by a guy that hooks people up with shoes and has his own obscene collection of dunks here behind. Actually, I'll put it out of the screen shot here. If you're on the screen, you should see it. He's got an entire wall full of dunks from, you know, everything from diamond dunks to the hunters that I had to the supreme dunks, Halloween, what the dunks, he's got three pairs of what the dunks, which is ridiculous to say the least. Um, absolutely nutty collection, loads of curly Jordan 1, he's got the original Yeezys here, he's got the Louis Vuitton Yeezys. It's got the MoMA of Off-White Air Force Ones, Red October Yeezys, like absolutely insane collection, right? So of course, you know, um, Jeff Staple being a purveyor of hype himself and wanting to connect with the kids, decided to go on this show and sort of fight his case regarding the whole Warren Lotus um, bootleg Nike controversy that's, I wouldn't say gripped the sneaker community, but it has really uh, been an interesting thing to observe from afar. From what I've seen so far, and again, I'm not really, I'm the worst person to communicate with this sort of stuff because I hate sneaker customizers. I think they're the most uninspired, unoriginal bunch of creators that exist within the streetwear scene. They regurgitate the same things. It's the same materials, the same color combinations, the same models of shoes that they always try and redo and remake. Um, really, really boring. But I understand, you know, if you're into shoes and you're into luxury fashion, the only natural progression up from the only natural way up from buying shoes in the retail store is to then start asking someone like a shoe surgeon to cover it in python leather would i necessarily wear it no does it make me you know want to vomit whatever in the morning today yes but i completely understand that kind of lane and why people would do it not necessarily something i like not inspiring not doesn't you know doesn't necessarily change or move the needle in any way shape or form but i get why that actually exists the issue i have with the warren lotus issue with the dunk sbs was number one from what it looked like from the outside looking in look like he was just capitalizing on the resurgence of these nike dunks right especially some of the collaborations that came out in the early 2000s um stuff like the stussies and stuff that i had that i didn't really care about have now kind of um you know become um cultural items of the times right via their endorsement from you know hype sneaker collectors like or offset no take yeah offset um travis scott and a few other people who have been wearing dunks you know for the best part of what a year and a half i still think the nike dunk is probably one of the most underwhelming shoes in terms of the amount of money nike puts behind them and the amount of actual attention and love they get from the average day from the average everyday person and sneaker collector i think there's more sneaker collectors out there that have more dunks in their collection they don't wear than any other shoe i'm guaranteed it because i know that was that was the same for myself i had more dunks in my collection than i actually wore day to day they just happened to be good to look at and put on the shoe wall anyway that set aside i don't think warren lotus did enough with his shoes um for them to be deemed as a credible bootleg he did hypothesize that he was somehow getting them made from the ground up in an italian or factory atelier when that was completely false they were just fakes that he bought from china and he slapped his own logo on the side now that's all well and good if you're doing that but be upfront and tell your customers that you're doing so don't purport to be some sort of um you know uh savile row level craftsman in terms of what you're putting together when essentially you're just creating a sort of performance art piece in the same way that i don't know that um heron preston did when he put the gucci print or louis vuitton monogram print on the swoosh on the side of his air forces you know the uh, street sweeper things kind of harking back to the good old days of hip-hop when people used to customize their air force ones with various prints of you know luxury high fashion materials and stuff so the shoe itself is uninspiring pretty dead pretty shit but the surprising part of it is the fact that somebody so respected in the scene not for me because i think he's you know riding off the coattails of one good design he had back in the day when no one was really around and since everyone else has popped up in the scene he's had nothing else to answer for he's only there because you know he's friends with people had a long connection with them of over time again just because of his age but in terms of actually producing meaningful impactful cultural work his best work has kind of been been and gone and his time has been and gone but Jeff Staple for him to kind of hatch his name to the Warren Lotus train was very odd but it also made complete sense if somebody's desperate for relevancy and desperate to be included in the conversation so for him to latch upon it 
it to co-sign it in some way shape or form and want to kind of push it in some way of course led to him supposedly being cut from nike um i don't not sure how true that is actually that was just a rumor i remember reading on fashion demos because i think nike unfollowed jeff staple on their social media accounts and it seems like he's been going on a bit of an apology once an apology tour but an explanation tour trying to rationalize why he decided to jeopardize his entire career for a pretty shitty sneaker customizer who's kind of a no, pretty shitty graffiti artist who's laughing as a sneaker designer and he explains a little bit of the story behind why he decided to do it on this podcast called sneaker talk let's hear what jeff staple has to say regarding the issue bob's with nike and like we said you made one of the most dopest exclusive hype shoes on the market to this day years mm. later a decade later mm -hmm. obviously we've all been seeing warren do he did a stussy dunk mm -hmm. he did uh what was it heineken 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 dunk and then he did the hottest one of all uh -huh. the pigeon yeah how was it i don't know if you want to get into it too much but whatever you can say like how was it like as far as the process of like how did he reach out whatever you whatever you can say whatever you're comfortable saying on yeah. camera i mean obviously a lot of people want to know about it and everyone everyone wants to know Come what on, exactly is going up. on yep for us, for a little bit. i mean i'm i'll say i'm always a fan of diy bootleg culture right you know i just love it I, that's how staple started um and to me, that's where true creativity happens, you know? I once heard Kanye West say, I hope every kid out there bootlegs my shoes, because that's when the right. next great shit will happen. Um, so I've been a fan of Warren and what he was doing. Um, but again, kids, that's not bootleg culture. That's just you grabbing a shoe that already exists and putting your own solution on it. There's nothing, and again, you're not even, um, buying the legit thing and re and the kind of the real flex would have been for him to spend his entire time documenting a process of buying up as many pigeon dunks as he could get a hold of in various levels of you know um degradation and you know just general condition right for everything between three out of ten somebody's actually skating them every day to a brand new box fresh pair and restoring them to some level of acceptability and then deciding to edit those those that would have been a really cool experiment and trying to basically put them up available for auction raise some money for a good cause put some attention on da -da -da -da, whatever it may be but going out and buying rep replicas which are essentially fake soft shoes and then putting your own tag on them and still selling them for double what they're actually worth in terms of retail right because you're you're paying less than 300 dollars for them but then to slap your logo somehow that justifies you adding another 150 on top of it and to make it 300 dollars is just plain lazy it's not sneaker customizing you're nothing he's nothing like the shoe surgeon he's a poor imitation of that guy and again i'm not even a fan of that kind of stuff that they do with all, all the lizard and python skin and everything um i can't speak much more beyond right. that because it is as everyone knows it's an it's a it's a legal matter now that i can't speak on it's a, it's an open legal matter right now um and what an you idiot. know i can see what the an perspective idiot. on both sides but i will say that you know brands have always pushed the culture forward and it's always been uncomfortable for certain parties you know right, of course. when bathing ape first put out the bapesta pulled the swoosh off an air force one and put like something that looked like a, a star and a star yeah. there was the og heads that was like yo f that that's whack that's basically a bootleg yeah. japanese heads were like no that's dope that's nigo so you know dope, yeah and and of course now bape is like a multi you know probably almost a billion dollar company right. and they can't be again it's a f it's a false equivalency when that Bapesa first came onto the market, there was nothing like that, that existed. The whole idea behind it was, if I remember correctly, he wanted to do a collaboration with Nike. They refused as per usual at the time, right? They don't really tapped in. Now they probably, you know, they would probably suck their own dicks to have a collaboration with an up and coming baby Nate person. But back then they did, I'm assuming that's what the story is. Again, I may not be incorrect from what I remember here. They refused to do a collaboration with him. He then goes out and decides to make his own version of the shoot. He puts it out and it was essentially just an Air Force One with a babe star uh, swoosh on it or star print, whatever you want to call it, as Jeff Staple pointed out. They then, I guess, threatened to sue him. It doesn't necessarily go to that level. There's an understanding behind the scenes. They have some sort of communication where they get to some sort of resolution where Nigo ends up doing this thing 
to get out of being sued where he changed i'm gonna say 21 different design points of it whether it's different paneling different sections different details eyelid changes there was these really small subtle changes on the babe side again if you've got to pay yourself you know what they look like in hand to compare to the Air Force one that really differentiate them and again from the naked eye of stepping back from afar they look pretty similar but they look no more similar than you know what's that louis vuitton high that looks like a jordan one it doesn't necessarily look like a jordan one but obviously kind of lends itself from the elements of that iconic shoe loads of brands do that again because i guess for the most part it's pretty difficult to come up with an original silhouette especially when you're competing with you know sneaker brands like you know nike that have had decades and decades of experience some of the best designers working in their teams kind of coming up with silhouettes the best you can do as a luxury fashion brand or a brand in general is to just build upon the good stuff that they've done and of course add your own little twist cool what Warren Lotus did wasn't that. He bought some shoes from Alibaba, put his put his little stupid uh, Freddy Krueger mask thing on it, and then decided to flip that for $300 as a way to kind of what? Give kids the chance to own a pigeon dunk. It's not a pigeon dunk though. First of all, it's a fake. And second of all, you're just adding a swoosh on it. So again, false equivalency. He stopped at this point, you know? And to me, it's like the difference between, here's, here's my thing. Like I always want to just question why does Nigo get away with it? But like when Skechers does a bootleg, it's horrible. Right. And it is horrible. I agree. Yeah. But I I'm interested in the question of why like a dude in China who's a bootlegger is bootlegging. And then no one gets away with it. Skechers is whack, but Nigo is dope. Because that's what streetwear is about. That's why Jeff Staple is, that's why Jeff Staple is not cool. And Hiroshi Fujiwara is, you might, have been in a scene as long as he has or whatever it may be but you can never kind of equate to a level it is what it is this is such a weird way to justify himself being like imagine wanting to die on a war on lotus hill imagine that having all the experience that he's had in the scene having seen all the ebbs and flows of it to suddenly be you know be hitching your ride hitching your reputation off the back of that guy is just odd and again justifying it with the examples of sketches what this is like what what <laughs> I I hundred percent get what you're saying. Yeah. Right? And that and that's where I'm confused why they'd be upset at what anything you guys did, but it's more of like okay, a, let's fast forward a bit, he's gonna be you know babbling a lot here, Warren, so, Benji. Yeah. I feel like they Let's see. Mm -hmm. So I guess they they I, it, this shoe right here. Yeah. Now let's go to like sabotage and Sue Surgeon, who is not even changing the swoosh. Right. They're straight up bootleg like, like they yeah. are taking yeah. the swoosh and i yeah. love these guys i've collaborated with them too because i also want to question why is the guy who made the og pigeon dump with sabotage who is a diy right. guy you right. know okay it's talking about his ass behind the scenes the people at nike don't like people like sue surgeon right when they're going out and deconstructing shoes i'm pretty sure he has to buy his own trainers he has to kind of you know really put up a lot of his own bread in order to do those workshops there's a lot of work that goes into making those things it's an actual craft i'm sure from the time that i've spent working with people around that area i'm pretty sure they're not too infused with the shoe surgeon doing what he does but still he does it he actually cuts material he builds a shoe from the ground up um he goes out and sources the best luxury materials he puts it together in a very impeccable way i've seen some of the reviews for the final product and they're really really impressive not to my taste of course but in terms of objectively creating something from uh the canvas of what nike have created in the past epically done right that's how bootleg should be done in that regard but to suggest that warren lotus is even in the same current conversation as, as a sabotage or as somebody is against legendary sabotage and somebody as influential as a sue surgeon is a real disservice to those two guys and what their work that they've provided on the scene so to me what's really interesting is that when nike sues or gets mad what they're saying is you're bootlegging you're making people think that they're buying the fake thing. Like when you go to Canal Street and buy a fake Rolex, you want to floss to your friends that this is real. You want to trick them. No one's buying a shoe surgeon or a Warren Lotus shoe to trick their friends into think, thinking, yeah, yeah, it's a, thinking it's it's a, a different it's a, thing. They know, they know that. You don't go to warrenlotus.com, add $300 item to your car and be like, oh, he tricked me, man. I thought I these thought were, was a Again, I thought these were the point. pigeons. I Sky's thought these were the, the Stussies. No. Come on. This guy's a dumb dumb. Honestly, I like, I like what he did with everything. It's great for him. So now it's... What's this saying here? Nike. Do you know why he started to fall back together? Please. Do, do you know how...
this is just able attempting to blow people's minds with some pretty anecdotal um some pretty basic nike history that you should all be aware of if you've read the phil knight book or you've been you know uh you've been exposed to any kind of student culture you'd know this already but to somehow use it to justify again the mess he got himself involved in is just so bizarre phil knight started nike do you know why he started nike phil knight everyone knows phil knight yeah. founder of nike of course he was a distributor for asics tiger sneakers okay he was a distributor for wow. the japanese brand asics mm -hmm. and he started selling asics out the back of his trunk to all the runners on the west coast okay right? He got so much demand that ASICs couldn't supply the demand. Okay. He's like, yo, I need more of your shoes. I need more of your shoes. And they're like, we can't get you. So what did he do? Did he go out and buy his own pairs of shoes and then slap his own logo on the side of it? Tell us, tell us. Anymore, you're, you're selling too well. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to take a waffle maker and I'm going to make my version of what you did. Right. And he made it. And the first one was like the Bruin, the waffle runner, right? That was the first shoes. Yeah. Those were bootlegs of ASICs. Right. He Bootlegs were inspired by the shoes you were selling. And again, key difference here. He made them. He made the bootleg because the original maker couldn't supply the demand. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound at all familiar to what's happening? He literally thinks he dropped the biggest gem in the world when he's just saying the most obvious of things. Everyone does this when they're starting something. If there's no skateboard brand that kind of adheres or kind of ticks the boxes of your interest, you go and start your own skateboard brand. There's no hardware brand that ticks the boxes of your interest. You go and start your own thing. You want a tool that, that kind of turns into a flipping iPhone charger. You make your own company off the back of that. Just because you build upon the great ideas of people that have come before you, that necessarily mean it's a bootleg. That's not what Warren Lotus is doing. What Phil Knight did by getting out his waffle maker machine and making his own shoe by hand in those earlier days and building up Nike to being what it is now is completely different to the shoe surgeon going and buying, again, replica trainers, taking off the swoosh and adding his own insignia on the side of it. That isn't, that, there's nothing transformative about that. That's just him buying ready-made stock and then putting his swoosh inside of it. Now, again, if he sold it as that, that's no no shame, no game, because that's the same thing that custom shoes and suit designers in some respect do, right? Like I mentioned before, slapping a bit of um, Gucci fabric on the side of a swoosh or completely removing the swoosh and putting other bits and bobs on it. But they're not selling that. They're not selling that as somehow I have made this shoe from the ground up with premium Italian materials. No, they're telling you, I went and bought this blank Air Force One from Foot Locker, from JD Sports, and I've added these things on it. And I'm hoping the things I've added on it has added value. And if that's the case, you are going to agree to pay this, you know, this kind of inflated price tag on it. That's all well and good. We did it before. I think it was Meteor Sports I used to go to back in the day. They used to do airbrushing on the side of your shoe and shit. Wiley made those kind of famous back in the day, during the Graham days, right? That was a thing that used to happen. But again, that was transformative on the canvas that you already knew existed. Not the pretending that you're somehow rebuilding a shoe from the ground up when you're absolutely not. And you know what the clever, you know what the big thing is to point out why Warren Lutters is a scam? Look at what he's done since. Look at how he's tried to fight against this court case by bringing up those other monstrosities of shoes that he's now being sued a second time for, right? He's got another pair that looks exactly the same where he's kind of sort of changed the paneling a little bit on Photoshop. And again, he hasn't made these things in real life, right? They're just things that he's going to then go and send out to a Chinese factory to go and make off the back of it, right? He hasn't actually made them himself as he's portraying it as. He's just gone and sent them to a factory somewhere in China, which probably explains why we haven't actually got any physical images of these things in real life just yet of the new shoes because with covid and stuff i'm assuming it's stuff it's hard to get things in and out of the country but what a bizarre hill to die on if you're jeff staple you decide to hit your ride again for myself i've never been a fan of the guy i always thought he was a little bit of a chancer he just happened to you know get in the good books of everybody because he just hanged around long enough right if you stay if you stay consistent enough in a scene and you don't you know you don't sort of uh slip away you put out consistent work, even if it's not good. You would go to say it's the same story about the flipping pigeon dunk and people queuing and people need to get stabbed and whatever nonsense he speaks about. Just a, an absolute charlatan that's finally been exposed for exactly what he is, going down in complete flames, still talking about his glory years, you know, without inventing anything new. And his reputation is going to be sullied by some absolute dickhead of a designer who's kind of LARPing as a custom shoe wear designer when he's not absolute 
horror show a situation maybe i'm in the wrong here maybe i'm reading it wrong and i'm kind of being a little bit harsh but i'd love to know what you think in the f comments down below do you think jeff staple is explaining himself well is phil knight effectively warren lotus or is warren lotus phil knight or is he just purposely misinterpreting the facts so he can fit his narrative and justify his decision to essentially throw his entire career for a fake pigeon dunk made in the factory somewhere in china let me know in the comments down below